Please welcome Deep Dive into the Most Demanded TV Worldwide, featuring Ward Seeger, CEO, Parrot Analytics. Uh, my name is Ward Seeger. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Parrot Analytics. Um, I do want to thank the previous panel for setting this up so nicely, talking about you know, the, just the, the, the problems with the sheer amount of data that's available and processing and turning it and, and the general problems with measurement that the industry is facing. So, so we're going to dive into um, a global solution for a global problem. Um, it's it's going to be pretty hectic, action-packed. Um, probably won't be able to keep up if you're writing notes, but we'll be around if you want to get the video or the presentation. Um, so a, a global solution for a global problem. Um, let's recap the problems that I think we've heard consistently throughout the day um, over the panels and the presentations. Um, we have this really rapid proliferation of content distribution platforms that's happening around the world at an increasingly rapid pace. Um, that's causing a really rapid, unprecedented fragmentation of audiences across these different platforms, which in turn is leading our ability as an industry um, to measure audiences across these platforms to be less and less effective with um, every passing day. So, so the whole panel-based, survey-based approach to measurement that has served the industry so well for the past three or four decades, um, suddenly struggling um, to keep up with that fragmentation, both within the US, but also if you consider this at, at a global scale, to panel your way through to every OTT platform around the world, um, merging that with linear viewership becomes really, really problematic. So now many of you guys here are our customers, so you're very familiar with what we do. For those who don't, we are a data science company, and we measure global demand for TV content uh, in real time because we just heard demand changes on a, on a real-time basis across platforms, because now content lives on all sorts of different platforms, and on a country-specific basis, because the demand for a given TV show in one market could be completely different uh, to that in another market. So how do we do that? Well, basically by going out and capturing all the different signals that we've just heard being talked about in terms of the different ways that people interact with content watching content, streaming content, but also reading about content, sharing it, discussing it, critiquing it, rating it, uploading it, downloading it, so on and so forth. There's all this myriad of different ways that people are interacting with their favorite content online beyond just simply watching it all. Now, so we go out and capture all these different signals, and then understanding that all these signals are not born equal, we then weight them accordingly. because. If I watch an entire episode of a TV show, surely that is a stronger indication of demand than me pressing like on a page. And so it gets weighted higher. So we process over a billion data points a day from 249 countries. So we capture global popularity of content in every single country on the planet. And we turn all of that into a global measurement system, a system that says, hey, um, let's look at a TV show recently released like The Crown and understand how popular it is in any given market around the world. And also, let's zoom in on a market, say France, on a given day and understand on that particular day exactly how much more popular Westworld is compared to Orange is the New Black. So we have this global system. And what I want to do over the next couple of minutes is take a dive around the world and understand exactly how we can use that in different ways. Because we now have access to the world's largest audience behavior data sets from, as I said, people pirating things, streaming things, talking about it, reading about it, viewing it, uh, discussing it, critiquing it, and so on. So, so let's understand, combine all that on a global measurement system. That's the first step. And then step two, how do we apply that to improve our business? So, so let's look at the US. So this is a really simple application to start off with. Um, over here, this is the highest peak demand in 2016. So at what point did these shows re the, reach the highest point of demand? So, the season finale of Game of Thrones reached the highest demand that any TV show has ever reached in the US, followed closely by the premiere of the new season of The Walking Dead. Marvel's Luke Cage also um, got off to a really good start in the US. Let's go to China, where a lot of these shows and platforms aren't legally available. Game of Thrones and The Walking Dead still come in at number one and two. House of Cards is actually really popular. And now I think a lot of us can understand why. Um, Marvel's Luke Cage and Sherlock also uh, wrap up the top five. In Brazil, Stranger Things, Mr. Robot, make it into the top five. In France, Orange is the New Black is really, really popular. In fact, it's only second to Game of Thrones. And in New Zealand, Westworld got off to a really good start. So that's an example where we can just literally go into any country around the world and understand how any given TV show is doing, regardless of what platform it's airing on. 
So now we can look at individual country, but also we can look at different regions. So we can aggregate regions and their popularity towards certain types of content. For example, we understand that in 2016, European audiences were really into drama and horror, whereas Asian audiences were really into comedy, reality, and variety TV shows. In fact, we can actually quantify specifically how much more into horror and drama were European audiences into compared to the rest of the regions around the world. Let's go to Canada, a country where, um, whose population is about to get a really sharp rise. Um, now, we, uh, we're looking at original series across di digital platforms in Canada in 2016. So we're looking at all of these original series on Netflix, Hulu, Yahoo, and Amazon. Um, Stranger Things, by far the most popular original series uh, in Canada, followed by Orange is New Black, Marvel's Luke Cage. Interestingly, off the top 20, Hulu has two original series that crack in the top 20 original series there, and Amazon won. Let's go to China, again, with original series on digital platforms. In this case, none of these platforms are actually available in China. Netflix expectedly has its original content being most demand in, in China. Surprisingly, Crackle, which is far smaller than some of the other OTT platforms, has its content coming in at number two, led by startup and comedians in cars getting coffee. Now, you're starting to get the idea. We can look at demand for content around the world, not only by title, but by studio, by platform, by region, by genre. So we can also see, for example, in Argentina that Warner Brothers and Fox had a really good 2016, followed closely by ABC and HBO. Not only can we understand what's popular where, but also how are people engaging with content in different ways. For example, let's go to the UK on October 24th, 2016, where we're comparing the different ways that people are interacting with these three different TV shows, Game of Thrones, The Walking Dead, and Marvel's Luke Cage. And we can see that over 70% of the interactions between the fans of Marvel's Luke Cage and the TV show in the UK happen on file sharing networks. Whereas for The Walking Dead, over 70% happened on social media. Now, these things tell us different messages. That's on a given day. By understanding that, actually, The Walking Dead was just about to be released, so there's a lot of anticipation for it, so there's a lot of chatter and talk about it, whereas Marvel's Luke Cage had been released. Presumably, people were at different parts of the season, weren't talking about it as much, but were file sharing it a lot. And by isolating every individual component and tracking how these interactions change over time, we can truly now to start to understand the interactions between audiences and content at a country-specific basis and more nuanced and granular basis than we've ever been able to. So how does demand change and evolve over time on that? Um, so here we're looking at uh, the demand over 2016 for Game of Thrones and The Walking Dead. Um, two cable shows, and what we can see here is the episodic nature of demand, where it peaks at the, rise, at, at, at the release of every episode, it dies down at the end of the season, and the demand starts to pick up before the new season comes out. Now, what's really interesting here is we can measure the demand for content that's not even on air months before it's on air. So you know, we heard about talking about optimizing marketing and advertising, understanding how audiences are reacting and responding to a certain type of content even weeks or months prior to a season launch. That's really interesting. So remember the previous slide, the episodic nature of demand for episodic releases. Here, we're stacking a week prior and four weeks after the release of Netflix original series, again in the US. Both new titles and returning seasons. So these are full season releases on Netflix. And what we can see in every single case, with the exception of one, a huge spike on the day of the full season release, a sharp drop after that, and a second weekend rise where people finish watching, binging on their favorite TV show, and then it drops right back down. Now, this happens in every single case with the exception of Stranger Things, where in week three and four after its release, it continued to build demand, whereas at the same point in their life cycle, all the other Netflix original series were rapidly losing demand. So what affects demand? Of course, it's impacted marketing, advertising, lots of things that we can do to change it, but what we've built is a measurement system that captures it. So what affects demand? We've had a look and we've seen, for example, winning an Emmy Award actually impacts significantly the popularity of a TV show. Um, for example, Baskets actually had a 700% increase in demand after its Emmy win. What we've seen is increase in demand and popularity for an Emmy win is inversely proportional to, to the existing popularity of a TV show, meaning Re all unknown shows had a huge increase in popularity after an, a 
there anyone. So Basket had a 700% overnight increase and it, and it doubled this demand long term after that. Over, during July, we saw a really rap sh sharp rise in the demand for Pokemon the TV show after the release of the Pokemon Go app. These are unrelated events to the actual TV show. So we published this, and actually later in July, there was a CNBC article with Netflix saying we saw the same rise um, in actual viewership for Pokemon the TV show on the platform. So now we can do a lot of this and slice and dice in lots of different ways. What I want to do here really quickly in six seconds to wrap up is just go around the world and do some quick verse offs. So in 2016, Wrecked was twice as popular as Casual in Mexico. Uh, in Russia, The Expanse, 50% more demand than Colony. In Germany, House of Cars, 30% more demand than Orange is the New Black. 2016 in Thailand, Silicon Valley has a really strong base. Startup is rapidly catching up. South Korea, the Shannara Chronicles, 20% more demand than The Magicians. And Italy, The Amazing Race, 40% more demand than Survivor. And India, Teen Wolf, 40% more demand than Supernatural. In Poland, The Loud House is really popular. And in Chile, Breaking Bad is still twice as popular as Narcos. And South Africa, The Americans is really popular. So to wrap up, we were here 12 months ago, and what we promised the industry at this very same stage in the same summit is that we were going to build a global demand portal, essentially a product, a dashboard where you can go in and find out yourself all of these insights that we just presented around the world in a self-serve live dashboard. That's exactly what we've done. So our product, we can go in and select, drop down any country around the world, understand exactly how the popularity changes for any given TV show, regardless of what platform it's airing on. Right, zoom in into the demographics for any given show and how they change over time. Zoom in into the mood towards a certain TV show and how that changes over time. The engagement towards a particular episode of a TV show and the overall engagement with the story and how that changes over time across all titles and understanding the breakdown of the demand of different ways that people interact with it and how that moves and changes over time. So really, we're only just scratching the surface of what we can do once we've combined all the different ways that people are engaging with content into a single global measurement system. And really excited to, to work with many of you in the room as we get this up and running. So thanks very much.